Good morning, everybody. I hope that you are all well and safe. The lecture of today deals with language and society, uh, dealing with key aspects of sociolinguistics and community. First, I will start with the definition of sociolinguistics. Sociolinguistics is the study of language in its relation to society. It differs from formal linguistics in the sense that formal linguistics is axed on the structure of language without taking into consideration the social context in which communication takes place. Sociolinguistics, on the other hand, is focused on the relationship between language and society. While formal linguistics is concerned with the internal rules underlying the structuring of sentences, sociolinguistics is focused on social dynamics underlying language use in different social contexts and by different speech communities. Sociolinguistics is therefore closely related to human communities and how language reflects social and cultural identities. It describes different speech communities and the way people who share the same linguistic heritage talk to each other in particular geographical regions. It also studies how language is used to convey information about the self and the others in terms of social variables, such as age, education, social class, gender, ethnicity, and region, and how language is used as a sign of individual group and national identities. These language varieties are also investigated to depict power relations within a particular society or solidarity relations within a particular speech community. A key distinction in this regard is the difference between a standard language variety and its non-standard varieties, also referred to as the difference between language and dialects. What is then the difference between language and dialects? The first determining factor in the distinction between a language and its dialects is that one language has two or more dialects associated to it. One language has more, two or more dialects associated to it. The second factor is that these varieties of the same language are considered dialects of the same language if users of these dialects can understand each other while using these different dialects. If you can talk to each other and understand each other using different dialects, this means that you speak the same language, but these are dialects of the same language. These are dialects of the same language because you can understand each other. It follows that if speakers of two different language varieties cannot understand each other, this means that they are using different languages, not the, uh, different dialects of the same language. If two people talk to each other and they cannot understand each other, this means that they are using two different languages and not two dialects of the same language. 
The third factor is that dialects are often used in the oral form of communication. Most of them do not have a written form while language has both oral and written forms. And due to the prerogatives of the written form, language is codified by standardizing its phonology, morphology, syntax, spelling, and vocabulary. This is why we refer to language as the standard variety, and we refer to dialects as non-standard varieties. This can be explained by the fact that while dialects foster group identity, language creates and reinforces national identity. While dialects identify different speech communities within a society, language gives national identity to members of society. It is a sign of national unity at the linguistic level and how the state identifies itself and its citizens language wise. In this regard, the state may be monolingual, bilingual or multilingual depending on the linguistic architecture of society and the political decision vis-a-vis -vis this linguistic landscape. This leads us to the politics of language. Why should we take into consideration the political dimension in setting the difference between language and dialects? In fact, from a purely linguistic view, Dialects are not subversions or flawed versions of standard varieties, but they are language varieties with their own linguistic systems that enable their users to function in different contexts and with different people. And there is nothing that prevents a particular dialect from being upgraded to the status of language. This is why linguists do not like to use the dichotomy language versus dialects, but they prefer to use language varieties, making the difference between standard and non-standard varieties. You see, instead of talking about a language and its dialects, Linguists prefer to talk about standard variety and non-standard varieties, language varieties. The decision to select a particular language variety and to make of it an official language is often triggered by political, sociocultural, or historical factors. It is often the case that it is the variety spoken by the elite of society which is upgraded to the status of official language. With all the prestige and advantages associated to it and to its users. If we want to dive deeper in the status given to particular language varieties within particular societies, we will find that it is all a question of politics. In fact, offering a legal status to a language as the official language or denying the same to another language is underlined by political considerations. To make this clear, let us review what we said earlier about defining factors that differentiate between a language and its associated dialects. Two ideas were stressed in this regard. First, we said, if people speak 
speak to different language varieties and they can understand each other. This means that they speak different dialects of the same language. Second, we said, if people speak two different language varieties and they cannot understand each other, this means that they speak two different languages. Yes. There are varieties of language that are perfectly intelligible. Intelligible means that people can understand each other. There are varieties of language that are perfectly intelligible to different speakers, but they are considered different languages, not different dialects. People can understand each other, but the varieties they speak are called or labeled or named languages, not dialects. Why? This is in order to preserve the sovereignty of states speaking these varieties of language. This is often due to political boundaries separating the two countries where these language varieties are spoken, such as Danish and Norwegian, or Hindi and Urdu. Another example from contemporary history is the case of former Yugoslavia, where the official language used to be Serbo-Croatian. Serbo but since the breakup of Yugoslavia, Serbian has been declared the official language of Serbia, while Croatian is the official language of Croatia, while these are mutually intelligible varieties. On the other hand, there are many examples that show that when different speech communities use their indigenous language varieties, they cannot understand each other. Yet, some states call these unintelligible language varieties dialects for political reasons, because they do not want to admit that these are languages in their own rights. Why? Because recognizing the status of language has implications on the legal, political, social, educational, and cultural levels, which such states do not want or they are unable to assume. This is why there is no catty line between what is considered a language and what is considered a dialect, as long as it is a matter of politics. This has implications on people's everyday use of language varieties and whether they can take full advantage of them or not. We need then to understand how the dichotomy standard versus non-standard varieties functions in society and who benefits from it. We will start uh, our analysis with the diglossia theory. As you know, the diglossia was defined by Ferguson and then by Fishman. We will start with the founder. Diglossia as defined by Charles Ferguson. Charles Ferguson is accredited for having identified the binary use of two related language varieties. Pay attention please. Two related. You have one language, and you have at least one 
dialects or two dialects, uh, 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 two dialects or more dialects associated with. Ferguson is accredited for having identified the binary use of two related language varieties within some speech communities. He used the term diglossia to refer to this process, explaining that two language varieties are in diglossic relation when the standard variety and the non-standard variety associated to it perform different functions in society. His study was based on four case studies of languages he selected as defining cases of diglossia. These are Arabic, standard and vernacular, French in Haiti, standard French and Haitian Creole, Greek with uh, Katarinova and Dimotiki, and German in Switzerland, High German and Swiss German. He termed the, stand, the standard variety the high variety and the non-standard or vernacular variety, the low variety. Highlighting that these related varieties are used in complementary distribution in society. In other words, they are used for different purposes and context. The high variety is used in formal context, such as work settings, education, media, administration, public institutions, and religious ceremonials. While the low variety is used at home with friends and in informal context. It is the high variety which has gone through the process of standardization and which is selected as the official language which gives it more prestige and power than the low variety. Now we move to the definition of diglossia as defined by Fishman. While agreeing with this explanation of diglossia, Fishman extended this definition to include not only two related language varieties, but also two different languages, provided that these two different languages are used in non-overlapping functions in society one of them being considered high variety and the other low variety. This shows that both definitions of diglossia stress the fact that the two language varieties or the two languages have mutually exclusive functions. They are used in different contexts and for different functions and different purposes. The high variety is designed for formal prestigious context, while the low variety, be it a dialect or a language, is designed for informal, less prestigious context. Now, let us comment all this. What are the limitations of both of these definitions of diglossia? To be brief, I will mention only three limitations. First, language use in different communication contexts is not as canonical as the description outlined in the two definitions, because in the same context, be it formal or informal, 
we may mix two varieties of language or two languages or shift registers. And even within the low variety, there are dialects that are perceived to be more prestigious than other dialects, which shows that differences in terms of prestige are not limited to the distribution high, low varieties. Second limitation. The two definitions present the two language varieties as taken for granted without taking into consideration power relations that underpin this distinction and that might reinforce social injustice and marginalization of segments of society that speak only the low variety. Normally, each citizen should have full command of both the high and low varieties. Otherwise, those who did not have the opportunity to learn the high variety in school will be disadvantaged because the high variety is learned through instruction in school. Those who did not have the opportunity to learn the high variety in school will be disadvantaged because they will not be able to engage actively with society and they will not be able to benefit from the same opportunities as those who master the high variety. The risk is even higher for minority languages. The third limitation, neither of the two definitions took into consideration what is called conquest diglossia. Conquest diglossia refers to the glossic situation which was imposed by colonial powers that imposed their languages as high variety to the detriment of indigenous languages, which were forced to be placed in the status of low variety, showing in such cases that the problem is more serious than just a question of difference in prestige, because two variety uh, more, the question is more serious than just a question of difference in prestige between two varieties of the same language. Well, I think that I have covered the main issues in sociolinguistics and community. Now, I will answer your questions. Let us see if I have any questions. 